Hello, my name is Ivan Taylor. I'm a mentor in the System Dynamics Society. And one of the things I like to do early in a mentoring session is take the mystery out of system dynamics. And the way I do that is by showing someone how to take a model that's developed in special purpose system dynamics software and convert that model into an Excel spreadsheet. And one of the benefits I have find in uh, using Excel for modeling system dynamics is that you can calibrate the model uh, using the Excel solver. So today I'm going to show you uh, a system dynamics model and how I converted it to Excel and how I calibrated the model using the Excel solver. So I'm gonna give you a little background on the study that this uh, presentation is based on and the data that we used in the calibration process. And then I wanna show you the model that I built to, uh, to, for this study that's in the software, in the special purpose system dynamics software insight maker and how I transferred the model to Excel and then calibrated the model using the Excel solver. So this study is based on uh, Canada's oil sands, where we were looking at the social, economic and environmental impact of the oil sands to Canada. And we were lucky enough to obtain estimates of oil extraction from Canada's regular energy regulator. And they provided data from uh, 2005 to 2020. And then they provided projections of oil extraction from 2020 to 2050, best based on um, their knowledge of the current policies that are in place and the future policies that uh, are being planned in the near future. So I'll show you now the data that we obtained. And I'll just make this a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, here is the data. And you can see that we go from 2005 to 2050. And we have data on, the, on millions of barrels per day in drilling in mining and drilling. And we're only gonna look at the mining today, but the same process was used for drilling. So just to get a feel for the data, I wanna show you what the graph of the time series looks like. So if we take a graph in Excel of the data, this is what we get. We get a picture like this showing the oil extraction from mining from 2005 to 2050, where there was quite an increase in the amount of mining done over the period 2005 to 2020. But then uh, the Canada's energy regulator expects that the um, amount of ex oil extraction for mining will basically stay at the 2020 levels until about 2040 when it will start to decline. So uh, I had uh, this data and I wanted to build a model that would uh, replicate this data. And I came up with this model here and you can see here that I have oil reserves and then I have mining as a flow out of oil reserves. And this is the data that I have on mining. And I want to uh, build a model that replicates the data that I have on mining. So uh, I thought that a good way to do that would be to look at mining as the product of uh, the product of the minor productivity and the minor workforce. 
So I had this idea that the minor workforce might be increasing over time, whereas the minor productivity might be decreasing over time because it's harder to extract oil uh, over as, as the oil reserves start to decline. So um, I built this small model where we talk about a goal and a gap. So here we have the workforce and we have an initial workforce and a long-term workforce. And then we have a, a change in the workforce as the workforce uh, gets closer and closer to the long-term workforce over time. So if we look at the formula here for uh, the time, the change in the workforce, we can see here that the change in the workforce is equal to the long-term workforce minus the current workforce divided by the time to change the workforce. So this ends up being a goal and a gap that's closed. Similarly, we have this idea of productivity where we have initial productivity and long-term productivity. Now, the initial workforce was low and the long-term workforce was higher, whereas the initial productivity is high and the long-term productivity is low. But the formula is the same. So if we look at the formula here for the change in the productivity, we see it's the long-term productivity minus the minor productivity divided by the time to change the productivity. And if we run the model, we get a picture of the stock of oil reserves. And we get a picture of the stock of productivity in barrels per person per year. And we get a, a a picture of the workforce in people. And we get a picture of the mining, which is barrels per year, which is the product of productivity in barrels per person per year times the number of people. And this shows the, a, a picture of the mining ex extraction that's somewhat similar to the data that we saw earlier. So now I'm going to show you how I calibrated this model. And I'm going to go back to the Excel spreadsheet. So now I'm going to start by inserting a new worksheet. And I'm going to copy the data uh, on mining from uh, this data spreadsheet to a model spreadsheet. Okay, so now I have the data and uh, this is in, let me just expand this for you. So this is in million barrels per day and I'm gonna convert this, I'm gonna call it actual mining and I'm gonna convert this to be barrels per year. So I'm gonna take the bar million barrels per day multiply it by 365 and multiply it by 1 million. And that gives me a very large number. And I'm gonna reformat this so it's easier to read. And so now we have the actual mining in 2005 in barrels per year. And we will cut and paste this down the, over the 45 years. And now we have the actual mining per year uh, for the 45 year period. So now we're going to build the model mining. So I will put this model mining in this column. And again, this will be in barrels per year. And I, I know that the model mining is equal to 
the workforce times the productivity. However, I have to calculate the workforce first. So I will calculate the idling workforce, and that's a stock. And I will calculate the flow of the change in mining workforce. And as you saw in the model in, in, uh, in Insight Maker, we had an initial mining workforce and a long term mining workforce and a time to change the mining workforce. And the mining workforce is in people. The time to change the, the change in the model in the mining workforce is in people per year. And the initial mining workforce is people. And the long term is people. And the time to change is years. Okay, so we have now, we're going to assume that we know how many, how many miners we have in 20, in 2005. And we'll assume this value is 20,000. And we'll, or sorry, we'll actually, we're going to make the initial value 20,000. And we're going to call the stock value of the mining workforce in 2005 is going to be equal to the initial value. And I'm going to make all of these variables uh, in integers so it's easier to read them. Okay, and let's assume that the long-term workforce is 60,000 people. And we're going to calibrate that mod, that, uh, that variable. And we're going to assume the time to change the workforce is 20 years. So now we can calculate, we have the stock of mining workforce, which has that initial value of 20,000. And now we can calculate the change in the mining workforce, which is the long-term mining workforce minus the current mining workforce divided by the time to change the mining workforce. And I'm going to anchor these variables here, H3 and I3, so that they don't change. And I do that by putting a dollar sign between the letter and the number. Okay, so now I'm gonna calculate the workforce in 2006. And that is just, the workforce in 2005 plus the change in the workforce in 2005. Now, in oil, this is a, an example of Euler integration with a step time of one year. If you had a step time that was smaller than that, you would have to use a, a step time value and multiply the step time times the change in the previous step. But since uh, we're only gonna use a step time of one, I'm gonna just say that this new value for the mining workforce is the previous value for the mining workforce plus the change in the mining workforce. So now we have a new value of the mining workforce of 22,000 people. And now we can calculate the new value of the change in the mining workforce. And we can just cut and paste that down. And we see that now in 2006, the change in the mining workforce is smaller because we're closer to this long-term goal. Now we can cut and paste this down here. And we can see here, how the mining workforce changes over time. And now we'll do the same thing for minor productivity. So we will 
take uh, minor productivity as the stock and we'll have to change in minor productivity and we'll have an initial minor productivity and we'll have a long-term minor productivity. And we'll have the time to change the minor productivity. Okay, now I'm going to set the initial minor productivity to equal the initial actual mining divided by the initial mining workforce. And I get this value here. And then I'm going to say that the long term mining workforce is equal to the end, the my actual mining in 2050 divided by the long-term mining workforce. And we can see that these values are, the, that the long-term mining work, mining productivity is lower than the initial productivity. So I'll just make these integers so they're easy to read. And then I'll assume again that the time to change the minor productivity is 20 years. So now I'll set the stock, the initial stock value is set to the initial value in the data. And the change in the stock value is equal to the long term, the long term minor productivity minus the current minor productivity divided by the time to change. And I will again uh, anchor these variables so they don't change when I do a copy and paste. And you can see that now the, the change in the mining productivity is negative. So when I take get the new minor productivity, I take the old minor productivity and I add the change in minor productivity and I get a lower value for minor productivity in 2006. And now I can cut paste this value into this cell and you have an, a change now that's different in 2006. I'll cut and paste this down here for the 45 years. And now we can see we have a changing minor productivity. And now I'll go back here and I will take the uh, mining, model mining, and I'll take the mining workforce times the minor productivity. And I will put that into that, that cell. And I'll just format this so that it's easier to read. And now I will cut and paste this down here. And I now have the model mining and the actual mining. So now I'm just going to change the size back and I'm going to now do a graph of the, the, the model mining and the actual mining. So I have here these columns and I produce a graph, scatter graph. And I now can see I have this sort of pattern. And you can see here that um, the, uh, the, the, the fit is not great, it's, but you can see that it's somewhat shaped like the data, if you have the data in blue and the model in pink. 
So we can play with these uh, parameters, the initial values, long-term values in time to try to get a better match between the data and the model. But I find that somewhat by trial and error method somewhat inefficient. So what I generally do is I do a calibration process as follows. First, I insert a column and I call that column the squared error. And I take the, the, I take the error uh, between the difference between the actual value and the model value and I square that. Okay, there's no error in the first value, but when I take the, when I copy, copy and paste this down, I end up with some significant errors. As you see here, the numbers are quite big because you're talking about millions. So I'm going to change the cells here to scientific notation. And you can see we have very big numbers in the squared error. So I'm going to now insert another column and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to call this the sum of squared error. And I'm going to now just use the sum function and I'm going to sum all of these values here into one cell. And I now have a value here that is very big. And I'm going to format that into scientific notation. And I see I have a very big number. So now I'm going to uh, calibrate the model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the solver going to go get the solver program and the solver is an optimization routine that's available in Excel, nonlinear optimization. And I'm going to minimize the sum of squared error, which is in cell F3. I'm going to minimize it and I'm going to minimize it by varying the long-term long workforce and the time to change the long-term workforce change the workforce. I'm also going to change the initial mining productivity and the long-term productivity and the time to change the productivity. So I'm going to vary all of those parameters and try to minimize the squared error. I'm going to go to options now and I'm going to make an assumption that all of these values are non-negative and then I'm going to solve them. I'm going to do a solver. So now this gives me uh, an approximation to the data that looks fairly good. But I'm going to use the solver again and I might get a better answer. So now you can see that I get an even better fit of the data and the model. So the model's in blue and the data's in pink. And then I can take these numbers here and go back to the, uh, go back to the, uh, the uh, insight maker and I can input the values for the initial productivity and the long-term productivity the time to change the productivity. And then with all those parameters in the model, I can have confidence that the model does a good job of matching the data. So that's, um, that's how I do it. And if you um, have any, any questions, um, feel free to reach me at this email address and I'll try to answer your questions. And if you have any comments, I'd be interested in your comments. So um, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope to hear from you sometime in the near future.